Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be with you here today. Praise God. Listen, thank you for your testimonies. Thank you for your feedbacks. I love them coming in. Because it's good to know how the Word of God is, is, is making impact in your life. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Let your spirit fill our hearts and bring understanding to every word spoken today. Thank you for inspiration. Thank you for the teaching anointing and the anointing to understand your truth. I declare right now burdens are being lifted from the life of everyone watching me and yokes are being destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 33. And this was where we stopped yesterday. It says, verse 33, But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. Now that is God's part to do. He will put his law in our hearts, in our minds, and write it in our hearts. He says, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. He's talking about you. So he will be your God and my God and we will be his people. Now I said, who are we before? Hey, there is something about identity. Now what's God saying? I will put my laws in their minds and write it in their hearts. I'm bringing my stamp of ownership on you. See? Now, now you know, you take your book, say, that's my book. No, someone else say, no, that's my book. You say, this, this is my book. Say, no, that's my book. Say, okay, how do we prove it? Is there a name on the book? Ah, I forgot to write my name. What about you? You forgot to write. Hey, but wait, I, I did some jottings in the book. And then they open the book, look for the page. You say, yeah, that's my writing. Is this your writing? Um, I think so. No, no, no. This is my writing. See, the fact that you wrote on that book, it has your print on it. Shows a mark of identity. So when God says, I will write my laws, I'll put my laws in their mind and write it in their hearts. What's he saying? I'm claiming authority over your life. And God said, when I do that, the result of this, now, how is God doing that? Let's go to the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2. Hallelujah. Praise God. Joel 2, 28. And it shall come to pass afterward. Now I want you to take note of that word, afterward. We're going to talk about this later on, later on this week. So it says, ah, and it shall come to pass afterwards, meaning something is going to happen before this. All right. So what's going to happen? He said that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Mm -hmm. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And, and it says, and also on my hand, on my men, men, men servants, and also my handmaids, my maid servants, excuse me, I will pour out my spirit in those days. What's God saying here? What did Joel hear from the Lord? I told you last week, Joel heard from the Lord the same thing Jeremiah heard from the Lord. And they were speaking the same thing. Jeremiah said, I'll write my, I'll put my laws in their minds and write it on their, on their hearts. And, and when I do that, no one is going to say to one another, know the Lord. Now, Joel is speaking here. He says, this is how it's going to happen. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
Now, now notice, note that word. It says, on all flesh. Now, when he says all flesh, you know, you should have enough sense to know that he's talking about the children of God. He's talking about his sheep. Not every flesh on the face of the earth. No, 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 no. If, if you know scriptures very well, you should know by now that it's not every human body or every human being on the face of the earth that belongs to God. And I mean that literally. That's another this talk. So when he says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, he is not saying when you count a census of every human being on the earth, the spirit is going to be poured out upon all flesh. Yeah, because there are some people that can never receive the things of God. They can never receive the things of the Spirit. Never. It is not meant for them. Jesus spoke about those people when he told the disciples, For unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Unto them it is not given. Rather, he says, all things are done to them in parables. He says, why? He said, because... I want, because the word of Elijah must be fulfilled in them. That seeing, they see, but they don't um, understand. Hearing, they hear, but they don't perceive. See? Now, he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will begin to prophesy. Now, you see the word prophecy, or prophesy, can confuse you here. You see? Now, when you see that word prophesy, you think, oh, God is giving us the gift of prophecy. And what you think about prophecy is thus saith the Holy Ghost. Thus saith the Lord. Oh, my children. Oh, my people. Or some, some. Oh, Reki, Maraba, Roko, Bo, Bo, Bo. My children. I want to speak to you. Reki, Keke, Keke, Loko, Poro, Dodi. Hey, Nana. Now that has its place. But that's not what I, Joel was talking about in this place. You know, sometimes we've had meetings and there's an outpouring of the Spirit and people began to speak in tongues. People began to prophesy and we say, wow, this is what God said. You know, just like Peter. Peter on the day of Pentecost, you know, in Acts chapter 2, while, while they, everybody was speaking in tongues and everyone was excited and those outside were wondering, what's going on here? And Peter stood up and said, hey, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And guess what? You know, you know, sometimes people don't observe these things. So, so you ask the question, has Joel's prophecy been fulfilled yet? And someone said, yes, of course. You say, when was it fulfilled? On the day of Pentecost. No, 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 no. It wasn't fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Say, but that's what Peter said. That's what Peter said. And hear me. Peter was speaking by the Spirit of God. So, say, eh. so well, Peter said this was that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Now I want you to observe something. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want you to observe something. Look at verse 28. Let's take this thing gradually so you understand. Hmm. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon on all flesh. Joel speaking by the spirit of God say, it shall come to pass, I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. No, take, this is my spirit. Take it. Are you following me? All right. Now let's go to Peter's words by the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2. But verse 12, Acts chapter 2, verse 12. Okay, let's look at verse 15. It says, For these are not drunk as you suppose. Peter was speaking here. Since it is only the third hour of the day, but this is what was spoken by prophet Joel. Now look at verse 17 closely. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Did you see that? Peter said, Joel said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Peter says, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. What's the difference? Simple. To pour out and to pour out of. Are they the same thing? No, they are not the same thing. 
Hey, maybe, maybe it's just English. No, it's not English. Listen, both men were speaking by the Spirit of God. Of course, they didn't speak English on that day, praise God. They spoke their language. But the translators understood that they didn't say exactly the same thing. They knew it. That these two men didn't say exactly, even though one was quoting the other, he didn't say exactly the same thing. And he was speaking by the same spirit. So what's going on here? Yeah, I'll tell you what's going on here. Listen, when the, on the day of Pentecost, God began the fulfillment of what Joel spoke about. Now remember what Joel said. Let's go back to Joel now. Now you've seen what Peter said and hold it in your heart and let's go back to Joel. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Verse 23. He says, But be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. Old King James says, moderately. To come down for you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Now what's he saying? The first outpouring is going to be in a measure. It's going to be moderate. Then after that first rain, the full thing is going to come. Let's see. That's what Joel prophesied. Now before he went on to go be specific in 28 to say, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh after all these things have happened. So when we say, oh, Peter declared that Joel has been, Joel's prophecy has been, not, not verse 28 yet. It started from 23. So that was the beginning. The rain, the rain, when he says Joel said the former rain, moderately. Then everything is going to come fully. So the first one has started. And that has, that's what has been carrying us on till this moment. Praise God. But hear me. We are about to enter the fullness. The real fulfillment of what Joel prophesied. And let me tell you something. Like I said yesterday, the disciples didn't see that and say, God, Joel's prophecy must be fulfilled. God, Joel's prophecy must be fulfilled. No, they didn't do that. They, they were just given an instruction by Jesus. Hey, wait, the promise of the Father is coming. And when it happened, Peter said, wow. And, and he spoke by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God chose the words that he spoke. He said, this is what has happened. Now tomorrow I'm going to be showing you something in here that you need to understand. And see the sequence of events. Because it's very, very important that we understand the timing that we are in. And know how to get ourselves yielded to the Lord. In what area are we supposed to be yielding ourselves to the Lord? That the word of God will be fulfilled in our lives. Praise God. Yeah. Very important. Because when you look at what Joel said, then I remember I told you to mark that word afterward. See? So the former rain comes and then it does something. And when it is fulfilled, see, when, when the, form, when the fu uh, former rain is fulfilled, the work of the former rain is fulfilled, then this is going to come to pass. When God pours out his spirit upon all flesh, and then we'll begin to see the manifestations of dimensions of things coming on the earth. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Listen, step out today with your mind, in, with this in your mind. God is going to do you good. Bye-bye.